they can go ahead and go there. And if you want to get ahead on chapter five, most of the information that you need for chapter five is there on school yourself. But if you want some additional things and questions that you have, then feel free to come here. Um, today, we are not going to go through the proof of one of the uh, one of the sum formulas that I wanted to go through, but I will put it on there tomorrow. So if you're okay with what you learned today, you're good. If you look at the school yourself or uh, some identities, you should be fine. If not, you'll see it tomorrow if you want to come back tomorrow and take a look at it. Yeah, uh, it'll be in the middle of the lesson, but we'll go through most of what we do today. And in the middle, I'll throw in the proof so that you guys can see it. The rest of these sum and difference formulas can be proved the same way. So we're only going to do one. We'll leave the other one for you guys to do if you guys want to. Uh, maybe during our office hours, if you're really interested in going through the proof, then just come during office hours and I'll go through it with you individually. Okay. All right. So these are our objectives for this lesson. Let's see if this is working. Yes, no, maybe so. All right, so we are going to use the formula for cosine of the difference of two angles. And I've got a little bit of a lag, so use the sum of difference formulas for cosine and sines and use the sum and difference formulas for tangent. So this is just how to use the formulas. Again, we're not focusing on the proofs on this one. I will throw in the proof in there tomorrow so that you guys can see what the proof is. Like. Right now you're gonna go, huh, where did that come from? And just accept it, learn it, and learn how to apply it. You're gonna see how everything comes together. It's so exciting today. I love today's class. So anybody that's done this, feel free to join in. Uh, cosine of Alpha minus beta, the cosine of the difference of two angles it equals what? Well, it's the cosine of alpha, in other words, your first angle, right? The cosine of alpha times the cosine of beta, which is your second angle, right? And then it's plus the sine of your first angle times okay so you might just want to write down the formula you may not want to write it in words but that's what it means right and we're gonna do a few examples on how you do that everybody good with that yes no yeah I got you <laughs> got it All right, so let's see how this applies example one so we're gonna use this formula to find the exact value we know that the cosine of 30 is what? Who remembers? Remember, one, two, three, three, two, one. If you don't, write down your table because you're going to be using it a lot today. So we're going to talk about the things you should know really quickly from now on. Cosine of 30, anybody? Wait. I know this. I know this. I said, God, I know. Oh. It was one half. I'm like, no, no, I don't care. Cosine of 30. Over two. There you go. Square root of three over two. You see it on the table? Yeah. That's all. Oh. If you don't have the table, take a screenshot. Take a screenshot. See, this is my wife. Say hello. Hi. Hi. That's my wife saying hi. <laughs> you got kids today? Hello. I got kids today. <laughs> awesome. I'll talk to you later then. All right. So it's the square root of three over two. So now they want us to obtain this exact value, cosine of 30 equals cosine of 90 minus sixes and the di difference formula, using the difference formula. So they, what they want us to do is, if we know how to apply this to get that value. So how would we do that? Well, we start off here, right? And what do we know about the cosine of A minus B? What's my A in this case? My alpha is? 90. 90. Very good. And my beta is? 60. 60. So it's going to be, what's the formula? Cosine of alpha minus beta is equal to cosine of? Cosine of alpha co times cosine of beta plus sine of alpha plus sine of beta. There you go. Good job, Haley. Okay. So that's the formula. So we're going to apply it to this, right? So we're going to write equals and then write. Cosine of 90 
times cosine of 60. 60. Very good. And then plus sine of 90 times sine of 60. There you go. Sine of 90 times sine of 60. Good. And now we use either the table or this gets back into what Ms. Coronel taught you about the, uh, I don't know if you remember the uh, a unit circle, but with the values on it. I know you guys discussed it or we discussed it while Ms. Coronel was there, right? And she gave you a quick, quick way to remember the uh, quadrantal angles, right? When you have one, zero, zero, one, and so forth, right? If you recall, she told you that she remembers it by putting co and sine. Oh, yeah. You remember that? Yes, no, maybe so? Yes. Okay. So she told you that's how she remembers it, and it's actually a really good way to remember it when you use the co and the sine, right? So for the first one, which is cosine of 90, what is cosine of 90? Oops, too far. Cosine of 90 is? Isn't that zero? It's zero, right? So that is this point. Let me see if I can write here. That is, oh no, that took something else. It's this point right here, right? Which is uh, zero, one, right? And remember what she taught you was what to do co and then sine, right? To remember the values for the quadrantal angles, right? So cosine of 90 degrees would be zero because this is zero one right yes remember that yes no maybe so mm -hmm. yep okay so now cosine of 60 degrees i very much need the unit circle right now you can either draw the unit circle i i would start to remember the unit circle even though you already have the if you have the table memorized it's going to help you to remember it quicker um, I still, the way I learned it, I always revert back to the table for some reason. And I know the circle pretty well, but I revert back to this. I don't know why. My brain just likes this, I guess. So, but it's easier to remember the circle. So I work with the circle. There's a, I'll put post on there some games that you can play to help you remember the values on the circle because it's actually better because it'll give you positive and negative values too. So we have um, cosine of 60 is? One half. One half, very good. And then we have now sine of 90, right? So we're back at the circle. Sine of 90 would be what? One. One, very good. Sine of 90 is one. And then we have sine of 60. Uh, which square root of three over two. Good job, square root of three over two, right? And from here, it's algebra. Good job, Sarah. So this would, from here, it's the algebra, right? Zero times one half is? Uh, zero. Zero, and then plus one times the square root of three over two is? Uh, three over, radical three over two. Radical three over two, square root of three over two. Okay. I'll give you a minute to finish copying that. Everybody good? Yes. All right. So let's move on. So now they want us to find the exact value of cosine of 70 degrees cos times the cosine of 40 degrees plus sine of 70 degrees times the sine of 40 degrees. How would we do that? Well, we know that the cosine of the quantity alpha minus beta is equal to what? Um, which, which is equal to cosine of alpha times cosine of beta plus sine of alpha plus times sine of beta. Good job, Haley. Okay, sine of alpha times sine of beta. Good job, so you're already memorizing it. Good job. So now if it works this way, that means it should work backwards also, right? Since they are equal, I can write it the other way around. Everybody good with that? So now, how does this apply to what you have on there, the problem that we have? This should become what? I can write it as one statement as Cosine, what's my alpha here? In this 70. 70. What's my beta? 40. 40. 40. So it should be cosine of? What? Sure. Yes, no. Unless you are. 
Never mind. Cosine of. You're right, Haley. Go with it. Oh, so it's 30? There you go. So it should be cosine of. How can I rewrite it? 70 minus 40, oh. right? Which is going to be cosine of? 30. 30, right? And what is the cosine of 30? Radical 3 over 2. There you go. Radical 3 over 2. Again, this is the um, unit circle I was saying. So take a picture. It lasts longer. Or a screenshot. I heard you giggle. I don't know who that was, but I heard you giggle. So I know you all missed that. So uh, this is the one I was talking about that it's important to remember. So I, we already know the table. We already know kind of the basics. This is the one you have to commit to memory because you will use it a lot. Okay. And just as Jesse had said, cosine of 30 is the square root of 3 over 2. Okay. Everybody good with that? Yes, yes sir. Maybe so. We move on. Okay. So now verifying an identity using this, right? Remember when we're verifying identities, we pick the tougher of the two sides. Which one looks tougher, the left or the right? The uh, left. The left looks tougher. I don't know if it looks much tougher, but they, neither one looks easy, but that, definitely the left one looks like the tougher one, right? So we're going to go from left to right. And they, have, they gave us a clue because they gave us cosine of alpha minus beta, right? So we're going to start off with the left side, right? So what does that equal? Well, what is my formula again, anybody? Oh, wait, wait, wait. I got you, I got you. Yeah. Wait. Cosine alpha times cosine beta plus sine alpha times sine beta. Good job, Dustin. Okay. So that is my formula, right? That is my formula, and I'm just going to rewrite the numerator just like that on there, okay? Now what can I do? I can take these and do what? Cancel. I can split them apart, right? Yeah. I can split them apart. So I'm going to split them apart. And when I split them apart, I get, oh, I had somebody waiting in the uh, waiting room there. At this point, you might be asking Hi, yourself, Keith. what in the good Lord is going on? Hey, Mr. Delgado. Go ahead and take a screenshot of this. I'll go back a second or two so that way you can see. All right. So then, like we said, right, we're going to take the numerator. And we are going to apply the formula, right? For the difference of two angles, cosine, right? And now I'm going to split them apart. Now what happens to the left side? What do you get? Cosine of alpha times cosine of beta over cosine of alpha times cosine of beta. What's that going to become? One. A one, right? So that one's going to become a one, right? So all those guys are going to cancel each other out, and I'm just going to end up with a 1. And what happens on the right? Isn't like a tangent? Oh. There you go. Good job, Keith. That's going to become a uh, right? Or Jesse. I don't know if that was Keith or Jesse. Who was that? It was definitely me. <laughs> definitely Jesse, he said. Oh, Oh, that was definitely me, Mr. Delgado. All right. So let's see here. We were here, correct? So now those are going to split apart and sine of alpha over cosine of alpha, right? That becomes tangent of alpha, right? And sine of beta over cosine of beta, that becomes what? Tan of beta? Tan of beta, right? Sine of beta over cosine of beta becomes tan of beta. So I can replace those with tan of alpha and tan of beta, which means that I have verified the identity. Got the idea? Yeah. I'll give you a minute to finish writing if you're writing. That was example two. All right. 
right, we move on. Example three, okay? Oh, actually, this is the sum and difference formula. So these are the ones you need to memorize, okay? Memorize them for right now, like I said. Tomorrow, I will give you a proof of one of them, right? And uh, for those who want to, if you want to just look at them on school yourself, you can do that. The sum one is there, and I think they might have another one. I don't remember. I haven't looked at all the videos recently, so I need to look at them again. But this is a cosine one. You want to copy these down. These are the sum and difference formulas for sine and cosine. So you have cosine of alpha plus beta, cosine of alpha minus beta, sine of alpha plus beta, and sine of alpha minus beta. So go ahead, give you a minute to write those down. And from here, it's just learning these, and then you're going to apply them. Like I told you, the rest of the stuff that we have for the rest of the year, it's not difficult. It's just new, okay? So you're using a lot of algebra. For those of you who were uh, kind of waiting for us to get to the algebra part, this is it. It's not hard. It's just you've got some new material to apply. The tree. All right, we're good? Yes. Yeah? Okay, we move on. Uh, this one, the sine of alpha plus beta is the one that you will see in the uh, adding identities on school yourself. So uh, uh, that's one that we're going to do a problem later. Um, I don't remember if it's the next problem or not, but that's one of the ones that you will see. So now, in this example, this is example three, using the sine of a sum, find the exact value. So they want us to find the exact value of 5 pi over 12 using the fact that 5 pi over 12 is equal to pi over 6 plus pi over 4. Okay, so go ahead and copy the problem. And how are we going to do this? What is my alpha going to be? Pi over six. Very good. What's going to be my beta? Pi over four. Pi over four. So you see your alpha, this is going to be alpha plus beta. So this is going to be sine of alpha plus beta, right? Yeah. Sine of five pi over 12 is equal to sine of pi over six plus pi over four. And now, like we said, this is sine of alpha plus beta, which is what? Somebody, anybody? Um, sine of alpha times cosine of beta plus cosine of alpha times cosine of beta. There you go. Good job, Haley. Okay, so go ahead and write it down. You have to commit these to memory, and now it's just a matter of applying this, right? Mm -hmm. Like you said, my alpha is pi over six, my beta is pi over four. And now I substitute and I solve. So this is gonna equal what? Would it be <laughs> sine of pi over six times cosine of pi over four mm -hmm. plus cosine of pi over six times sine of pi over four? There you go. <laughs> And from here is just reference, right? Now I'm going to reference either my table or my unit circle with all the values on it, right? And remember, you, the unit circle I showed you had the um, angles and degrees, but you can just convert those to radians. And it's the same thing. I think for this one, I put the table. So I'm just partial to the table. So pi over 6, pi over 6, sine of pi over 6, what's that? One half. There you go, right? Pi over six is one half. I'm going to replace that with a one half, right? 
-hmm. And then the next one is cosine of pi over four. What's that? Uh, right. Over two. Two. There you go, square root of two over two, right? That's the square root of two over two. So I'm gonna replace that with the square root of two over two. And the next one is cosine of pi, pi over six, six right? Cosine of pi over six pi is what? Pi over two. That is what? radical three over two, right? No, that's, that's radical three over two. So I'm gonna replace that. And the last one, which is sine of pi over four. Radical two. Radical, radical two over two. So I'm going to put that. The rest is arithmetic with fractions and radicals, right? So one square root of two times square root of two over two becomes just radical two. Radical two over. I'm trying to look away. Okay. Mm -mm. Oh, it's just radical two over four. Radical two over four. And then radical three times radical two becomes what? I think the radicals cancel out. Um, oh. I want to say radical six over two. Radical Maybe. six over four. 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 Radical six over four, there you go. So that's radical six over four. Remember your rules for radicals, right? You have two radicals and you can put them under the same radical. As long as the index is the same, the index here is a two. So you can put them under the same thing. So I end up with radical two plus radical six over four, okay? Got the idea? Yes, no, maybe so? Yes. All right, let's go to the next one. It says, suppose that alpha equals four over five for a quadrant two angle alpha and sine beta equals one half for a quadrant one angle beta, okay? So sine of alpha is four over five for a quadrant two angle alpha and sine of beta equals one half for a quadrant one angle beta. The rest, there's a few more problems that are going to refer back to this statement. So if you just want to write this statement and call the problems A, B, and C, I think there might be three after this, you can do it that way. It says find the exact value of cosine of alpha, right? So that's your problem. Find the exact value of cosine of alpha. Mm. This is taking us back to um, when you need to know your signs, right, for your angles and in what quadrant, right? So which part of the statement do I need? The first part or the second part of the statement? If I am talking about an angle alpha, do I need the part about angle beta? No. No, I'm talking about alpha, right? So let's focus on alpha, right? You only need the first part, which is angle alpha, right? So let's focus on that. So recall that, everybody remember this? All students take calculus? Yep. All students take calculus. That means that all your trig functions are positive in quadrant one. Only sine is positive in quadrant two. Tangent is positive in quadrant three. And cotan, I'm sorry, cotangent. Cosine is positive in quadrant four. Wait, Mr. Delgado, so yeah. that also means that Cosecant is positive in quadrant two, or right? Cause like that's kind of like the opposite, or or like right? No, I don't know. I don't remember, uh, Jesse. But you can look that up. Oh, uh, that's not hard to look up. Okay, but yes, I would remember both. Okay, whenever you look them up, remember them both. So which ones correlate to which ones, and where are they going to be? But right now, I'm only focusing on these because I, I don't want to ruin the punchline for you. That's easy enough to look up and commit to memory. Okay? Got it? Make sense? Yes. 
So let's see here. Uh, sine of alpha, they told us was four over five, right? So this is alpha. So my angle alpha is gonna end up in quadrant two, right? Which means it's going to be what? Positive or negative? Positive. Positive, right? Okay, so it's going to be positive. Okay, so no problem, Nico. See you later. Uh, this is my reference angle here, right? So now... This is my x, y, and my radius. So sine of alpha would be what? Um... I'm trying to remember right now. Yeah. Um, okay. Would it be? Which one? Sine is opposite over? Of the hypotenuse. But where exactly? I over R? They say again. I didn't hear you, Sarah. Y over R? Y over R. Remember, my reference angle is this one here, right? I, why can't I write? It's not letting me write. My reference angle is this one here, right? So the opposite would be y, right? And my radius is over here, right? That so would be y over r. Good job, Sarah. See that, Haley? Yes. Okay. My reference angle, even though alpha is over here, my reference angle is this one here, right? Uh, okay. Okay. I'm confused That's why. So it's going to be y over r. I got a little bit of a lag here. So y over r. Everybody got it? So r is going to be what then? They told the sine of alpha was 4 over 5. So y is going to be... y is going to be... Um, 4. 4, right? And r is going to be... 5. 5, five right? Four over five, right? So what we're looking for is the cosine of alpha. Right, find the the cosine of alpha, right? So now we have a way to find x because we have two sides of a right triangle, right? So now we can use that to find x. And what am I going to use to find that? What formula? It's called a Pythagorean. Good job, Sarah and Jesse. The Pythagorean or Pythagorean theorem. This is going to be x squared. Oh, it's three. X squared plus y squared equals r squared. Well, we know y and we know r, right? So we just need to solve for x. X, right? So it's going to be four squared equals twenty-five squared. That, that's not three. See, I got it. Exactly. So it's going to give me that x is going to equal plus or minus 3, right? Oh, yeah. Plus or minus 3. Right. But since we are in quadrant 2, x is going in which direction? Towards the, towards the left. left, right? So that means it's negative. Negative, right? It's negative going towards the left, so it's negative. Good, Sarah. So now it's going towards the left, so it's negative. So my answer is negative three, right? Yes. No! Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm still falling for it. We're like <laughs> six weeks from the year being over, and people are falling for it still. Why not? Thinking. What did they ask me for? They didn't ask me for X, they asked me for what? The cosine. Cosine. The cosine, right? The cosine of alpha, right? <laughs> so what is the cosine of alpha? Negative three over three five. Over Negative three over five. Good job, right? So it's gonna be x over r, right? It's gonna be x over r, which is negative three over five. 
okay? Notice a problem itself is not hard, but you have to know a lot in order to get here, right? The math is not difficult, but you have to know a lot in order to get here. So you're starting to put all these new simple things together and that's what makes it difficult. Okay? It's not that they're difficult, it's all easy stuff, but you need to know a lot in order to get here. All right, everybody good with this one? We can move on. Yes, no, maybe so? Yes. All right. Let's move on. So notice the statement is the same here, right? But now they want us to find the exact value of cosine of B. So that's your next problem. Find the exact value of cosine of B. Which part of the statement do we want? Do we want to know anything about sine of alpha or sine of beta? We want to know about the sine of beta. Right. That's what we're going to need. Sine of beta because we're talking about angle beta, right? So we need that part of the statement. So let's take a look at the angle, right? So here's my angle beta. And sine of beta would be what? If that is, that's y, right? So sine of beta would be y over? R. R, good job, that's y over R. So that means that it's what? What's my y here? Um, one. One. And what's my r? Two. 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 All right. So I know that. And now what am I going to do? What do I use? I have two sides of a right triangle. How do I find the third? The Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem, right? I'm going to use a Pythagorean theorem. So x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, right? Just like the other one. I'll give you a minute to try to solve this one and then we'll go over it, okay? Everybody got it from there? Is it radical three? Yeah. I'll give you I'll give you a minute to finish solving it. I want you to solve it all the way, find the cosine of b, and then we'll go over it. Okay, we're good? Yes. All right, so let's see what we got. Make sure that you've got the three things on here. We substitute Y and R. And we get um, X squared e e plus one equals four. Subtract one, we get X squared equals the square root of three. So X is gonna equal the square root of three. So now we know the value for X. That's okay. Fix it later. You're welcome. Mm. All right. So now what? We got that's the square root of three. So that's our answer, right? No. No. What do I need to do? I need to find the cosine of beta. Very good. I need to find the cosine of beta. So cosine is what? Radical 3 over 2. There you go. X over R, right? So radical 3 over 2. And since we are in the first quadrant, they're all positive.
Yes, they do. All right. We good? Yes. Okay. Moving on. Find the exact value of alpha cosine of alpha plus beta. So now we've got to use both here. What do we know from our previous work? Let's see. What did we learn about sine of alpha? Sine of alpha is four, no, four over five. Four over five, right? And what was sine of beta? Oops. Sine of beta. <laughs> One half. One half, right? You saw that, Jesse, cheater. Cosine of alpha. What was cosine of alpha? Negative three over five. If three over five, good. And what was good, Sarah? And now, what what is cosine of beta? Square root of three over two. There you go. Square root of three over two. Good job. Okay. Who was that? I didn't hear you, Charles. No. That, that was me again, Mister. But it's also Sarah. I think so. Okay. So let's see. So now we've got these, right? So now we want to know the. Cosine of alpha plus beta. So what's that going to be? What's the formula? Cosine of alpha times cosine of beta plus sine of alpha times sine of beta. Cosine of alpha plus beta is what? Say again, Haley. Cosine of alpha times cosine of beta plus sine of alpha times. Wait, no, is it? Mine, no, not, no, plus. Look it up, plus. look it up, look it up. <laughs> look it up, look in your notes. Okay, minus, minus sine of alpha times sine of beta. Sine of alpha times sine of beta. I see it, Charles, no worries. So I won't ask you stuff so you because then you can't talk. <laughs> I'm trying to monitor everything, but the chat is hard to monitor. All right, so now cosine alpha. What's cosine alpha? What do I replace that with? Um negative three over five. Good, negative three over five. And then cosine beta. Uh negative three over two. No, right, lies, lies. Radical three over two. Radical three over two. And then minus sine alpha, which is? Four over five. Four over five. And then sine beta, which is? One half. Right? And the rest is just almost arithmetic. There's a little bit of multiplication. Basic multiplications and fractions and stuff, right? Order of operations, be careful with that, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got three square root of three over negative three square root of three over 10 minus four over 10. And then that just, I can't simplify the numerator, right? But I can write it as one fraction. Everybody good? Yes, sir. Okay, go for it. We move on. I think we got two examples left. Uh, sine of alpha plus beta. You want me to give you a little bit of time to figure this one out? Yes, no, maybe so? Yeah. Okay, I'll give you a couple of minutes. And then I will return to see where we were. This is your hint. 
Think about your previous work, okay? That's your hint. I will be back in two minutes. All right, let's see what we got. Uh, I think I got it. We got the same values as before. Sine alpha, sine beta, cosine alpha, cosine beta. Now we're working with sine of alpha plus beta. So what is the sine of alpha plus beta? Look it up if you don't know. Is it sine of alpha times cosine of beta plus cosine of alpha times sine of beta? Good job, Amy. Okay. And now I'm just substituting and multiplying, right? Now I'm just substituting and multiplying. What is sine of alpha? Uh, 4 over 5. 4 over 5. And cosine of beta? Uh, radical 3 over 2. Very good. Cosine of alpha? Negative 3 over 5. And sine of beta? 1 half. One half. And then from here, it's just multiplying and simplifying, right? Mm -hmm. So that one becomes 4 square root of 3 over 10. The other one is a Next. minus 3 over oh. 10, right? Yes. And then you write it as one fraction. Good, yes, no? Yes. Delgado, this is so easy now, right? It's so easy. It gets easier. The more you do these, the easier they get because then you start to memorize them. Not on purpose, it just happens. All right, so tangents. You know, for tangents, right? Tangent of alpha plus beta. What is that? Anybody know it, took notes, or don't know? We'll just go ahead. The tangent of the sum of two angles is equal to equals. Whoops. <laughs> wow, I didn't do that one. Funny. All right, we'll do it right now. Let's see if we know it. I'm having a little bit of difficulty here. Major lag. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. I'm having a bit of computer trouble here. Here we go. It's loading very, very slowly. So we're going to cheat here and we're going to hopefully it'll let me cheat here a little. So you let me. Okay, can you guys still see that, or is that just too small? I mean, I, I can see it. You can make it out? 
Okay, so the tangent of the two angles is equal to The tangent of the first angle, what would that be? What would be the tangent of the first angle? It would be tangent of? Alpha. Tangent of alpha, good job. Was that Nico? No, that was me again, Mr. Delgado. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. You got this. You sound like everybody. So. I you got this very unique voice. I'm, I'm Batman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tangent of alpha, and then it's going to be plus what? Tangent of beta. Tangent of beta. Good guess, Sarah. And I think you're correct. If my computer will work, I will show you the punchline, but my computer is just being, hey. All right, tangent of beta divided by and let me take this out of here. One minus their product. So what would one minus their product look like? Well, so I'm going to say one minus tan of alpha times tan of beta. There you go. Good job, Haley. All right. So write down the formula. You may not want to write it in English. But definitely write down the formula. Make sure you've got it on there. Because that is our next problem. And hopefully I got to that part. I can't believe I didn't do this part. All right. We good? Let's go back to normal. And cross our fingers that Delgado did the last part of this. I feel like I'm on dial-up during the day because since everybody's working from home, haven't you noticed your internet is like really slow now? Yes. For my my the internet. We upgrade our, our internet and it's just not working right. My LTE worked better than my internet. Yeah? It's my phone, yeah, my phone too. Yeah, that's true. My internet, not so much. Okay, hold on. Let me look at the chat here because I'm, I'm going here. Oh, yeah, Martin. Yeah, it's it's very strange. Happy Earth Day, Sarah. All right. It says verify the identity. This is our last problem, problem eight, right? Mm -hmm. So this is verify this identity. Which one looks tougher? This one's easy, right? Which one looks tougher, the left or the right? The left. The left, right. The left definitely looks tougher. The right side, pretty simple. So we work with the left. To the left, to the left. So now we just found out what the tangent of x is, right? We found out what the tangent of x is. So tangent of uh, x plus i. Oh, boy. Oh. So laggy. Here we go. Tangent of alpha plus beta is equal to, somebody help me out, what's the numerator? Tangent of? Tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta. Tangent of alpha plus tangent of beta over what? What's the denominator? One minus tangent of alpha times tangent of beta. There you go, good job. One minus tan alpha and beta. So let's start plugging in our values, see what we have. Alpha here is X, beta is pi, right? So this should be tangent X. Go ahead, somebody. Plus tangent pi. Plus tangent of pi over? One minus tangent X times tangent pi. There you go. Okay. Oh, Delgado, this doesn't look any better. It actually looks much, much worse. What can we do here? 
let's think for a minute. What do we know about the tangent of pi? What's tangent of pi? If you recall, the tangent of pi is? One. It's? Oh, wait, no, the tangent of pi? Oh, zero. Zero. Tangent of pi is zero, right? Tangent of pi is zero. So tangent of pi is zero, right? So what does that mean in terms of our problem? Wherever there's a tangent of pi, I'm going to replace it with a? Zero. Zero, right? So that's going to make that whole entire piece over here. Let me use this here. So that means this piece here is going to be a zero, right? And that means because this right here is a zero, zero times anything is going to be zero. zero. So that's going to go away too, right? But what do I end up with? Tangent of x. And tangent of x over one. one, which is? Tangent of x. Tangent of x. Simple enough? Just no, maybe so? Yes, sir. All right. And I think we are done. That was the last slide. Yes, it was. Okay, folks, like I said before, this is uh, to get you started. Hopefully, this will be enough to get you started on 5.2. Some of the problems will get a little bit more challenging, but they are not hard. Um, it's just a matter of the more problems you do, the better you get at this, the easier it gets. Okay? 5.2 due Friday. 5.2 is due Sunday. Okay, so your due dates are Sunday nights at midnight from now on for all remaining assignments. And um, assume that they're going to be assigned on Mondays. Um, if you go to school yourself and you want to take a look at the uh, addition identities and subtraction identities, and they have all the identities on there. So I would start off by looking at those and then seeing what you need because. Um, for some of you, that may be enough. Some of some people just like to be in class. I like, I'd love for you guys to be in class all the time because I like to see you guys. But um, if you cannot attend for some reason, you can go to school yourself. And then the video, I'll also post it once they convert it. I'll post it on the uh, a Google Classroom. Okay. If for some reason you can't attend one of the quizzes, uh, let me know and I will reschedule for you. If you weren't able to take the quiz Monday or Tuesday, then you need to make it up. That will be on Friday. Okay. Any other questions? Yes, no, maybe so. All right, give me one second. Let me take a big picture of everybody. So then everybody's met their requirement here. And I got to add Nico because he had to leave early. By the way, I showed Miss Molina the picture and she loved it. She thought it was great. We made the, uh, the, the shout outs. I don't know if you guys read the uh, school mail. We made uh, the shout out for, I don't know if it was yesterday or today. One of them. All right. So that's my attendance for today. Um, I am working on grade books. So hopefully I will be done with that soon. As soon as I am done, I will send an email for you guys to check your assignments to make sure I'm getting the credit for everything that you've done. Okay. Okay. Have a wonderful oh, so Yes. Oh my God! Wait, I have. Oh, I have to sit uh, on my test for uh five point two. Right. Hold on, so let me let me uh stop the recording and then we will talk. And if you want to stay and you want to go over some additional problems, that's fine too. Let me just stop the recording.